Hi, I'm Ruth Werner, and this is my audiovisual sidebar to my article called Lipedema, the Skinny on Painful Fat, that appears in the January-February 2021 edition of Massage and Bodywork magazine. As I learned about this condition, lipedema, I also learned a lot about fat cells, including that much of what I thought I knew about them was flat out wrong. And maybe I'm not alone in that. So I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity to visit the spectrum of fat cells in their various colors and locations so that we might all understand this topic a little bit better. And I do this with the caveat that this is not a video about weight loss or nutrition. I am not a resource for this. And I wouldn't ever want anyone to think that I was. So with that in mind, here we go with some fast fat facts. Ooh, let's say that three times fast, fast, fat, fat, fast, fat, fat, fast, fat. Yeah. Okay. Doctors who specialize in this topic refer to body fat as a distinct organ comprised of a variety of types of fat cells. Fat cells, also called adipocytes, are important contributors to human function and we would die without them. They are found in several places throughout the body, but most of our fat cells are located in one of two areas. That's the subcutaneous layer of the skin, especially around the lower belly and thighs and buttocks. This is called the gynoid distribution and the greater omentum. That's that apron of fat that protects abdominal organs deep to the abdominal wall. Other fat deposits can be found protecting the kidneys in the intramuscular septa and some other areas, but really this refers to only a very small percentage of all of our adipocytes. We start accumulating fat cells prenatally, and this continues up through puberty with the development of secondary sexual characteristics. At that point, the number of fat cells we own has traditionally been understood to be fixed. Certainly that's what I was taught. Fat cells may die off and be replaced, but their overall numbers were assumed to be stable. When I was in massage school, I learned that the only time an adult can add to the number of fat cells they own is when they're pregnant. I also learned that an average person adds about five pounds worth of fat cells with each pregnancy. Those are five pounds of storage tanks just waiting and hoping that you take another bite of that Snickers bar. As I prepared this article and this video, Frankly, I have not been able to confirm that piece of information, and it turns out that it might not be true at all. Some people gain what seems like intractable weight with each pregnancy, but it's not necessarily related to new fat cells. When we lose weight through calorie restriction and exercise, we aren't losing the number of fat cells we own. We are simply shrinking the ones that are with us for all of our lives. If we return to consuming more calories than we burn off, those shrunk fat cells get large again. This is both weight gain and size gain. The more fat cells we own, the more storage tanks we have. So for our hunter-gatherer ancestors, this was a big benefit. People with more fat cells could store energy for use at a later time. But today, many of us live with the threat of overnutrition rather than undernutrition, and having lots of big, full fat cells is not necessarily a good thing. As I've already mentioned, we used to think that our fat cell populations were essentially stable. And it turns out that this is only true for some cells. The omentum stays stable, some of our internal areas stay stable, but the fat cells in the lower part of the body in that gynoid distribution, those cells can in fact increase in number with age. And that's for everybody, pregnant or not, men and women, everybody can grow new fat cells that's how things happen for them. You may be aware that fat cells in the omentum are associated with a risk of cardiovascular disease and diabetes and general inflammation and some other things. Their chemical activities influence many aspects of human function and not always to our benefit. 
These cells can affect appetite and insulin sensitivity and inflammation and immune system behaviors. And this is why the apple shape in overweight people, which suggests an enlarged omentum, is often considered to be a greater risk to health than the pear shape that suggests enlarged fat cells in the subdermis gynoid pattern. It turns out there's even more complications than that. Fat comes in different shades, brown, beige, yellow, and white. And each of these behaves a little bit differently and has a different impact on our health. As we learn more about these differences, treatment options for fat-related conditions may become more feasible and more effective. Somewhere along the line in my history of education about the human body, I got the idea that brown fat packs around our organs and white fat is what is located outside the abdominal wall. And that turns out to be untrue. Both brown and white fat are distributed all over the body. So let's talk about brown fat first. In a society like ours, where most adults are overweight, at least by BMI standards, brown fat is highly desirable. People who are lean tend to have a higher proportion of brown fat compared to others. This fat is brown because it is loaded with mitochondria. Remember those powerhouses of the cells? And these organelles, they work to burn calories and actively produce heat. So the more brown fat a person has, the leaner they are likely to be. By contrast, white fat is better at providing insulation and stores of energy for future use. Too much white fat, especially in the omentum, of course, leads to an increased risk of some problems. But here's an interesting tidbit about diets. Extremely low fat diets with the intention of shrinking our fat cells can be unsuccessful for some people because we need essential fatty acids to keep the cell membranes on those white fat cells permeable. If those membranes are not healthy, they get dry and sticky. Those cells cannot give up their stores of fat to metabolize into carbon dioxide and water. So the lesson is if you are restricting calories to lose weight, be sure that an appropriate percentage of what you take in is in the form of healthy fats. Now let's talk about beige fat because here's the kicker. At least some white adipocytes are recruitable. What that means is that given the right circumstances, they can accumulate more mitochondria and, to, and begin to behave more like brown fat. So what are those circumstances? Well, the main one appears to be exposure to cool temperatures. If a person spends a couple of hours every day in a setting below around 66 degrees, we see that some of their white fat cells become invested with mitochondria and turn beige and become metabolically more active. However, this reverses pretty quickly if we don't get that cooling time every day. And lastly, yellow fat, well, that's simple. It is white fat that has accumulated unmetabolized carotene from our diet. So the more yellow and orange vegetables we eat, the yellower our fat becomes. So there's no exercise or diet regimen that will reduce the number of fat cells you own. Sorry. The only way to lose fat cells is to have them mechanically removed, either through liposuction or lipectomy. But as we learn more about the relationships between white fat and beige fat and brown fat, we may become better at managing how our fat can work in our favor. And for a country where over half of us are at risk for problems related to overnutrition, that could be good news in